Hi, this is Robert Weichel, RLW Real Estate, calling you. Uh, we're going to talk about a BPO today. Basically, first things first, we have a philosophy here at our office. Big or small, we accept them all. Here's the thing. BPOs are your lottery ticket, your foot in the door to get the REO. Example, let's come over here. Now, just real quick, when you're doing BPOs, my recommendation is to have two monitors. No, I don't work at Circuit City, and I don't get paid to tell you that, but right here, you're 42% more efficient with two monitors. So, observe. Right here, we get a BPO that just came in. This one's from Goodman Dean. We accept the order. We want to accept them right away. Now, a lot of times, you're going to get a, a blast email. You're going to get a whole bunch of people getting the same email. You're going to probably be banging head here. You'll be getting, oh, you're too late, or it's, but you just accepted it minutes ago. Let's talk about the ones you can get. For instance, okay, Goodman Dean. I just got a Goodman Dean BPO. Now what I'll do is I'll go to my computer. Now I have RoboForms and something you might want to check out. If you have any questions about it, go ahead and email us. But watch this, RoboForms. We go in and we accept it. It automatically remembers your password. You go in, you hit OK. Now, you're in the outstanding orders. You see an outstanding order. You log in. You tap in the low number. Now, the Goodman Dean BPO, I personally recommend to everybody, GoodmanDean.com. It's a great opportunity to get involved in the REO business. Now, watch this. The BPO form and the picture form, the photo form, are different. Let's see. So what I'll do now is I'll go in here, and I'll look at the BPO form, and this is kind of what it looks like. I've already kind of completed this one. Now, what it is, it's got the your comparable sales. you got three. You got your uh, group one, two, and three comps. And then you have your comparable listings. Three, and these are all in average condition, so they're within the same distance, within a mile of each other. It'll ask you days on market. In this case, it's 34. It'll talk about the neighborhood density, the values, the economy, housing supply in this place, in case there's a surplus in this marketplace, uh, subject uh, marketability, and so on. So you need to go in and complete this information when you're doing your BPO. Now, for example, I like two monitors, and here's why. Watch this. I can go to the, uh, in this case, Santa Cor MLS. I can have my MLS on this screen right here and I have my BPO on this screen. Now do you see how you're more efficient with two monitors? So let's get back to the BPO. I've pulled my comps, three sales, three solds. Now remember, foreclosureradar.com for the active inventory of other REOs and notice of trustee sales. DQnews.com gives you the area statistics about the zip codes and the declination of those areas. Now, the other thing you want to do is you want to add a photo addendum. You want to tell a story with your photos. We're going to go out here in a little bit, and we're going to go actually take the photos, and I'm going to show you how to do that in our next series on how to do the BPO. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to talk about part two of the BPO, the photos. We've already gathered our documentation and completed our BPO for the most part. Now, what we want to do is we want to take good quality photos that tell a pit. They tell a story. Okay, now... For instance, on Goodman Dean, you've got a front view, a side view, a street view, and an address verification. If you've noticed, there's two additional boxes for photos. That is so you can tell a bigger story. So don't be afraid to take as many photos as possible. What I personally like is I like taking 10, 20, 30 photos, 30 relevant photos. Now, don't just take a picture of the sky or the ground. What you want to do is you want to take relevant photos that tell the story. Now what we're going to do is we just got done pulling MapQuest, and yes, I do have a GPS in my car, but I like MapQuest because I like to take my notes on each individual property. So with that being said, let's go out. Let's take some photos. We'll see you soon. Okay, now we're at the property. Here's one thing you need to remember when you're doing a BPO. Obviously, have the BPO sheet that tells you exactly what kind of photos you're going to need. For instance, you're going to need to drive by BPO. The subject photos, one front, one side, one neighborhood, one address. Make sure you always bring this with you because every single BPO is different. Now, if you've noticed, we've parked across the street and down a little bit from the actual subject property. Uh, this is more of a safety precaution. Uh, the last thing you want to do is roll in in your bends and drive the parking lot uh, or their driveway. But I always like to get out, park across the street, and I'm... I'm familiar with my surroundings before I go up to the property because you just never know. Safety first. Okay, let's go check the property out. Okay, one thing you need to do, uh, remember your camera. And second thing, 
always check your battery before you go to said BPO. Okay, let's go. Try not to get by a car. That'd be a good thing. Okay, now. Here's the property in question. This is a condo. If you notice, it's surrounded by other condos. So I've already got my comps. I already pretty much have an idea of what the property is worth. But now I'm going to do a visual inspection. That's what the camera's for. You need to take great photos of the property. Really tell a story. Be the eyes and ears for the asset manager and or valuation manager. I always like to look to see what properties are for sale. Uh, so here's the address in question. Typically what I'll do first things first is I'll take a picture of the actual address. So I got an address verification and I like to get a copy of the actual condo complex name. Okay. Then what I'll do is I'll back up, try not to get hit by a car, look both ways, and take a picture of the complex. Now watch, here's one thing that you make a mistake. See right there, there's a reflection. I can see myself. If you can see yourself, so can the camera. So move out of the way and actually take the picture of the complex. Now, you notice there's people walking up this way. What you don't want to do is take a picture of them. So now you want to turn the opposite way. Take a picture of the street, guys. Not the street, the street, okay? And typically what I like to do is I like to take a picture of the complex. Now watch the sun, and there's the complex. Now remember, our photo requirements are as the follows. Okay, watch. Oh, hold on, let's go this way. Let's go this way. Hi. Thanks, appreciate it. Okay, not always can you get into a property, but sometimes somebody can let you in. Okay, now we're gonna go find the property. What we need to do is we've taken a copy of the property in question, this is the address. We did an address verification. We did our street charts. We did all our exterior photos. Not always can you get inside a condo. So what we're going to do is we're going to locate the property, the unit number, take a picture of that, and then we'll be done with this exterior. Now, the first thing is we actually have to do an address verification, not only of the complex, but of the actual unit number. So let's go find unit 31. And here it is right here. See how easy that was? We take a picture of the actual unit. And that serves as an address verification. Okay, turned out good. Make sure you check your photo to make sure that it, it, it comes out. So you don't have to come back here and take the photo over. Always look at your photos prior to leaving the property. Okay, now we're going to go downstairs. And typically what I like to do is I like to take a picture of the actual elevator. Look at the elevator, it's a little dated. I like to take a picture let them know that there's actually an elevator in the building. This camera will work. That'd be great. There's the picture of the camera, okay? Ah, uh, here we go. Going to the one or ground, I forget. Going one. Okay. So main thing is this is an exterior drive-by. It means you get out of the car. Drive-by does not necessarily mean you're gonna drive by. How many times have you seen a picture of somebody driving by and you see their car door in there? Try not to do that. Okay, so we're going to go downstairs. Now, I'm a big fan of as many pictures as possible. Even though they only ask for four, I like to take many more. Now, for instance, here's the mailboxes. I like to take a picture of the mailboxes. Okay. Take a picture of the mailboxes. I like to take a picture of the lobby. It kind of tells the story. Okay. They may not ask for it. They may not turn it out that good, but I like to tell the story the best I can. Okay. It's a security building. I like to point that out. See, like right here, we've got a security. I always like to take a picture of that. Take a picture of the security building. And that, my friend, is an exterior BPO. You know, a lot of agents ask me, Robert, you know, why do you do so many BPOs? Well, you know what? Number one thing, it's, it's I am, I'm a listing agent. There's no question. Uh, I do BPOs because I feel that they're, uh, they're a way for me to get my foot in the door, to, to display my work. I'm getting paid, you know, anywhere between fifty and seventy-five dollars. Do I do it for that? No, I do it. That that offsets my my marketing expenses. I look at, I'm getting paid to do a BPO and to market myself to these banks. So anyone out there that says, oh, I don't want to do BPOs, I think twice about that. This is an opportunity for you to shine, for your resume to the REO agents. You have a great day. Have a super REO day.